Welcome to our virtual picture book party. My name is Melissa and I'll be your host today. Our book parties are opportunities for us to share some of our favorite titles with you. We have five different presenters from our Storytime Specialist team and they're each gonna talk about five books. We'll show slides with the covers and, and an illustration from the inside of the book and they each have just about a minute to talk about their book. This month, our theme is back to school. We'll have some books about going to school for the first time, making friends, dealing with all of those feelings, meeting new teachers, and even what it's like to be the one who doesn't go to school yet. I'm going to have all of our presenters introduce themselves. Please say your name and your position at the library. Lori, will you get us started? Hi, I'm Lori and I'm a Storytime Specialist. Hello, I'm Karina. I'm I am a Storytime Specialist. Hi, I'm Paige. I am also a Storytime Specialist. I'm Tina and I'm a Storytime Specialist. I'm Madhavi and I'm a Storytime Specialist. And I'm Melissa. I am a Storytime Supervisor. Thank you, everyone. Go ahead and mute yourselves now until it's your turn to share your book. And we'll go ahead and get started with our first title. Lori will be going first. My first book is This or That by Cal Andrews. What's a kid to do? A little boy, Alexander, has so much difficulty making decisions. Overwhelmed when he needs to finalize what to wear, he misses the school bus. Unable to make a selection for lunch, he holds up the lunch line. And he ends up as a pumpkin for Halloween because he waited too long to decide on his costume. Alexander's parents make decisions every day. His mom is a judge. She weighs the facts and makes rational, careful decisions. Being an umpire, his dad tells him to use intuition and act quickly. Following their advice, Alexander continues to struggle making choices. One day, he chooses to have a no decisions day. Read the story to discover all the options and outcomes Alexander experiences as he develops his own decision-making strategy. I recommend this book for ages four to seven. If you like it, try another book about choices, What Should Danny Do by Ganit and Adir Levy. Nanakua Goes to School by Trisha Elam Walker. Trisha Elam Walker is a Black American writer and award-winning author who wrote this book as a homage to several Ashanti traditions and which teaches us about the Adintra symbols and their meaning, which have been preserved in modern day Ghana. Today, children's grandparents and great-grandparents are the last generations to bear evidence of the tribal marking tradition. It is Grandparents' Day and Zura is concerned because her grandmother Nanakua looks different because her parents followed an old African tradition and put marks on her face to show which tribal family she belongs to and to represent beauty and confidence. Finally, both decided to bring a blanket to explain the patterns of the Adintra symbols. And also they were not the same marks on Nana Akua's face, but can help explain them. This book brings to us so much wisdom and confidence to be who we are. The self-taught artist April Harrison brought to life her unshakable belief in the strength of family. My first book is called Big Boys Cry, written and illustrated by John T. Howley. It's Levi's first day at a new school and Levi is nervous. What advice could Papa give to soothe his son's worries? Papa decides on big boys don't cry. Levi repeats this mantra on his walk to school. And as the title suggests, multiple characters along the way do cry including the passionate poets practicing their prose. There's so much to see and discuss in this digitally illustrated picture book meant for ages three and up. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I'm looking forward to his new book coming out in January.
My first book is called Let's Play by Amanda McCarty. Have you ever been the new kid at school? The story begins with Suki and her family moving and Suki starting a new school. The book gives young readers different scenarios that explain different ways to navigate the acts of teasing as well as the acts of kindness. The picture here shows how after many days, Suki was able to make friends. This book would be good for preschool children and those who are going to elementary. Lola Goes to School, written by Anna McQuinn and illustrated by Rosalind Beardshaw. A simple and straightforward book from the Lola series, this book is suitable for ages three to five. Preschoolers and kindergartners will love the simple text and narrative. So, Lola is prepared and knows what to expect on the first day of school. She gets her bag ready with gifts from the family. She chooses her clothes and sets up everything for the big day on the night before. She has an extra pair of clothes just in case and oh, Dina, her stuffy, very important. Day starts early with a lot of hustle and bustle, hellos and goodbyes and some pictures to keep memories. After that, she effortlessly slips into the day with her teacher and classmates. At the end of the school day, mom goes to pick her up. She says goodbye to her teacher and friends. Lola is exhausted, has a snack and then takes a nap. One thing that got my attention was, Lola knew the words of the song and all the motions at the circle time. How is that? Because Lola used to go to the library for story times. Maybe that's why the author Anna McQuinn was also a librarian who used to run family story times. She knows that story times help our little ones with school readiness, both academically and behaviorally. Young Vol's gibberish is a heartwarming story of Dot's first day of school in his new country. First Dot sailed on a boat, then flew on a plane, and today Dot will be on a school bus. As you can imagine, everyone's words sound like gibberish to Dot, who is overwhelmed in the new environment. His ma tells him to listen and do the best you can. Feeling lonely and confused, Dot nods when people address him by the wrong name. Everyone in his class knows gibberish, except for him. Then something unexpected happens to help Dot make sense of the symbols and understand his new language. Read this story to experience Foe's wonderfully clever use of symbols and colors to depict Dot's mastery of the language. This is an incredibly well done story and helps us to understand the experience of an immigrant student. I recommend it for ages four to eight. If you enjoy it, try Amy Wu and the Warm Welcome by Kat Zhang, or My Name is Yoon by Helen Rakorvitz. We Want to Go to School, The Fight for Disability Rights by Marianne Coca Leffler and Janine Leffler. Author and illustrator Marianne Coca Leffler has received many awards, such as the International Literary Association Teacher Peak Book, the Florida Reading Award, the Hoosier Book Award, and the Bank Street Best Book. Author Janine Leffler is the co founder of Janine'sParty.com a website dedicated to changing the public perception of children with disabilities. She has a BA in communications and works at the nonprofit community serving organization that helps adults with disabilities. This nonfiction book was chosen as a Junior Library Guild Gold Standard Selection, and it is the true inspiring story about the people behind the 19 72 landmark case, Mills versus Board of Education, which ensured to make every public school in the nation a very inclusive place and for all, capturing times in history in the fight for disability rights in education. Justice, bravery, victory, and life changing are powerful words which are reflected in this story. Henry at Home by Megan Maynor and 
illustrated by Aaliyah Marley. This book is perfect for three to five-year-olds. Henry and Lisa are brother and sister, best friends, peas in a pod, and they do everything together. Get haircuts, go to parties, picking out new winter boots, and saving cheetahs. But when Lisa, and only Lisa, gets to go to school, Henry has big feelings about it. How will he handle his emotions and doing things by himself? Read this beautifully illustrated book to find out. This book is great for print awareness. Some of the words are written in a different, larger font, or all caps for emphasis. My next book is Lama Lama Goes to School by Anna Dudney. This popular series now includes a book about Lama transitioning from summer fun to preparing to start school. I chose this picture when rehearsing for this book party when Paige noticed a unique aspect of this book. The unique aspect is that it includes the many steps it takes to get Lama to go to school. It would be helpful to prepare children who are now new to school or are having trouble saying goodbye to summer. Have fun at school, Lama. Lena Shoes Are Nervous, written by Keith Calabrese and illustrated by Juana Medina talks about jitters on the first day of school, but has a funny storyline and a creative solution. It's Lena's first day of school. She is excited. Her blue dress is also excited. Her headband with the green flowers was always ready. Her pink stripy socks are not so sure. And her shoes? Well, her shoes are nervous. What a dilemma. Lena wants to go to school, but how can she when her shoes are nervous? After all, she must walk with them into her school. What happens then? Her dad helps her. I love the role of her dad in the book. He plays along with her imagination and guides her in coming up with a solution without deciding for her. Finally, her she shoes decide to be brave and Lena is very proud of them. This book also talks about how imagination and pretend play works in the minds of children and how boosting imagination and encouraging pretend play are very important for problem solving and critical thinking as they grow up. I Don't Wanna Go to School by Lula Bell. Mouse and dinosaur are preparing for the first day of school. As the story begins, neither one wants to leave their bed. They are so nervous they can't eat their breakfast. With hearts pounding and legs shaking, they are anxious about the scary kids at the scarier school. What if the children and teacher don't like them? Belle does an excellent job crafting parallel stories about the shared experience of first day jitters. Before school starts, Mouse and Dinosaur realize they may not be the only ones who are terrified. When class begins, Mouse and Dinosaur are each in for a big surprise. Read the story to see how the day unfolds. I recommend it for anyone nervous about starting the school year, especially kids age three to six. And if you like it, there's a good nonfiction reader, Big Feelings, Feeling Shy by Mary Lynn Dean. Isabel and her colores go to school by Alexandra Alessandri. Alexandra Alessandri is a Colombian American poet, children's author who won the gold medal in the 2021 Florida Book Awards. And she is the 2022 International Literacy Association Award winner in primary fiction. This is an inclusive and diverse bilingual book, English and Spanish which is based on the author's own experience of starting kindergarten in New York City while not knowing English. And it is a story that is true for many immigrants and children of immigrants. On the first day of school, Isabel worries about feeding in because her English is limited. Although she discovers that there are other ways besides words to communicate. 
Her art is a great way to reach out other students. This book includes a full Spanish translation and a glossary. Courtney Dawson is a, a freelance illustrator who has a background in animation and a deep love for picture books. Illustrations are full of color energy. All My Stripes by Shana Rudolph and Danielle Royer, illustrated by Jennifer Zivoin. Zane has a lot of stripes. Of course he does. He's a zebra. But after one particularly bad day at school, he thinks the only stripe anyone notices is his autistic stripe. After all, his classmates don't understand why he won't paint with his hooves, and he tries to talk to them about a video game, but since he stares at the floor, they don't even know he's talking to them. But when his mother holds him and they look in the mirror, she describes all the wonderful stripes she sees. And one of my favorite stripes is shown here in this illustration. It's his curiosity stripe. The back of the book provides notes and resources for parents and caregivers. The book helps us have great conversations about empathy. The Oldest Student by Rita Lorraine Hubbard and Ogemora. Can someone who is over 100 years old learn to read? In this story, in this true story, Mary Walker was born a slave and wasn't allowed to learn to read or write. Later, she married, worked, and had her children, so she was never able to learn to read. She and her husband would have her sons read to them until she was in her 90s. Eventually, she outlived her husband and her sons. When she was 114 years old, she learned about a reading class, and after a year, she was able to read her Bible. You are never too old to learn. Mila wants to go to school, written by Judith Coppins and illustrated by Anu Knez, is about Mila who is ready for school. But then what's the problem? Isn't that the perfect situation? Mila is all set for her first day of school. She is looking forward to it and as the title suggests, she wants to go to school. She knows what to do. She finished her breakfast in time and packed her backpack. The problem here is, Dad is stalling. He's taking forever to get ready. Mila is focused and does not want to be late. Dad takes his own time to eat breakfast, slowly ties his shoelaces, puts a leash on the dog, waves to his neighbor, stops by to watch deer in the woods and asks her if she wants to play on the swing. She gently nudges her dad. Hurry, dad, I want to get to school. Finally, when they reach school, Dad is anxious and nervous about leaving her. Many parents will resonate with this as their little ones go off to school. Finally, Mila understands what her dad is going through and comforts him by saying, don't worry, I will have a good time. And then she gives him a hug and says, he will always be her daddy even though she will make new friends. This is an awesome book to teach children empathy and that adults have feelings too. Misha Makes Friends by Tom Percival. Misha is a creative and artistic little girl. She creates all sorts of crafts, but there was one thing she found hard to make, friends. She struggled with knowing what to do and what to say around other children. This is a story of a little girl trying hard to fit in. Read this book to follow Misha's unconventional and creative journey to make friends. The use of color in the illustrations in this book reminds me of Vos gibberish as both depict difficult situations in grayscale with blooming colors as the story develops. On the end pages of the book, Percival shares encouraging thoughts about friendships with his readers. This book is part of the Big Bright Feeling series. I recommend it for ages five to eight. Other helpful reads are Too Shy to Say Hi, a picture book by Shannon Anderson, and a nonfiction choice would be Say Hi When You're Shy by Gil Hansen.
Little Larry goes to school, the true story of a timid chimpanzee who learned to reach new heights by Jerry Ellis with Mary Rand Hess. Author and illustrator Jerry Ellis is one of the premier nature and environmental photographers in the world. His work was recognized in 2015 with the Global Conversation Conservation Award from the Philadelphia Zoo. Author Mary Rand Hess is a poet, screenwriter, mixed media artist, and New York Times bestselling author of notable and award-winning books. Like humans, Larry, a young orphan chimpanzee, does not know how to be a chimp. This nonfiction story tells his life from his birth to his graduation from a forest school of an African sanctuary, his personality, environment, and relationship with other chimpanzees. He must learn how to socialize, to stay safe, to find food, and climb trees to develop himself as a healthy and well-adapted adult. Very expressive photography informs about chimpanzees living in sanctuaries and the role of human caregivers. It is a sweet story, a read aloud tale for children preparing to enter kindergarten or starting preschool. Your Name is a Song by Jamila Tom Tompkins Bigelow, illustrated by Luisa Uriba. Names are important. Your name, my name, and the name of the young child in the story. On a child's first day of school, no one can pronounce her name, and it makes her feel lots of things. On their way home, her mother ins is inspired by the music they hear as they walk down the street. She suggests that her daughter sing her name, sing everyone's name, because everyone's name is a song. Will she be brave enough to do it? The song, the book puts singing to great use. It cleverly demonstrates how singing breaks words into syllables. My next book is called Silly Jokes About School by Michael Dahl. This book reminds me of my childhood with my brother. He loved to learn and memorize silly jokes to share with the family. The back cover says, laugh your problems and worries away with the silly school jokes. The book includes pictures of diverse group of students and teachers. The jokes in this book are very simple and silly. It can help children learn the rhythm of jokes and language, a fun way to learn to read. Twindergarten, don't worry, it's not kindergarten spelled wrong. Twindergarten is written by Nikki Ehrlich and illustrated by Zoe Abbott. It shares the experience of twin siblings on their first day at school. The author was a preschooler and preschool teacher, sorry, and this book is inspired by her twin boys experience when they went to kindergarten. Dax and Zoe are inseparable and go together like peanut butter and jelly. They have jitters about their first day of school away from home and mostly away from each other. They are in different classrooms. Will they be able to make it through the day without each other? They were absolutely nervous, but also absolutely positively sure they would have an awesome day. They went to school, loved their new teachers and made new friends. Throughout the day, a part of their mind was thinking about the twin sibling. A corner of their heart was constantly missing the twin sibling across the hall. At last, recess, they got to play together and that comforted them. The day went by pretty well and they had a good time and they felt that kindergarten was absolutely positively awesome. The Smallest Girl in the Smallest Grade, written by Justin Roberts and illustrated by Christian Robinson. Hardly anyone noticed young Sally McCabe. She was the smallest girl in the smallest grade. No one noticed, or at least didn't mention, Sally was paying super extra special attention. 
but Sally notices everything from details about the janitor's keys and wildflowers on the playground to the behavior of her classmates. Nothing gets past Sally. She is a quiet observer until the day she decides to speak up. Something pushes her to act. Robert's rhyming flows effortlessly throughout the story. Robinson's diverse illustrations provide much to see and discuss. Their story is an excellent conversation starter about standing up to bullies and treating people fairly. Sally McCabe reminds us that even the smallest and quietest children can make a difference. I recommend this book for ages four to eight and for something similar, I really love Stand Tall, Molly Lou Mellon by Patty Lovell. Princess Arabella Goes to School by Milo Freeman. Author and illustrator Milo Freeman has produced about 50 picture books and is best known for her 12-part Princess Arabella series, a puppet series, an app, and a play. She won the Kieke Book Prize, a prize given out by Dutch National Libraries for Best Toddler's Book of the Year. This author helps fill a much needed niche. Picture books with more diversity, children of colors are the main characters in all her books. She heard a story about a little girl who was given the role of princess in a school play, but she refused to get it because black princesses do not exist. For that reason, she started writing tales about a black princess and that became Princess Arabella. It is a very engaging and entertaining first day of school story in what Princess Arabella learned some very unusual lessons as courtesy. Although she reacts by doing very funny and innocent childhood actions. One day princesses were allowed to bring their favorite pet. And what do you think Princess Arabella brought? Check out this book and you will discover it. I Talk Like a River by Jordan Scott, illustrated by Sydney Smith. I Talk Like a River tells the story of a boy who hopes his teacher doesn't ask him a question, who doesn't want his classmates to turn and look at him because he is scared, because the sounds of words are all around, but the word sounds are stuck in his throat. When he has a bad speech day, his father takes him for a walk and gives him a new way to think about how he speaks, about his fluency, which becomes, I talk like a river. In the back of the book, Jordan Scott describes why he wrote it. It is powerful and moving, and I love the watercolor ink and gouache paint illustrations by Sydney Smith. So, the next book is called One Wish by M.O. Uxell. This inspiring biography tells the story of Fatima, who was born in the ninth century. Her parents instilled a great reverence for knowledge. Fatima loved to learn, and she was inspired to start a school that anyone could attend so that many, many children could learn. As an adult, she and her husband became successful merchants. Following the death of her husband, she was able to realize her dream and start a school. And there are still students attending the school today. Cool is Wherever I Am, written and illustrated by Ellie Peterson, and this book is suitable for kindergartners and older kids. Does learning happen only in the classroom or in a school setting? What do you think? Or is the whole world a classroom? In this book, the boy already goes to school and looks like he is comfortable there. He learns, writes, creates, solves, stumbles and laughs. But he ponders that outside of the school building, he is continuously learning. Sometimes on his own when he plays, 
sometimes with the family while helping in the kitchen while building stuff doing fun activities and having adventures learning happens when he observes contemplates visits places goes to the library all the time while having so much fun sometimes not so much fun we make mistakes own them and try to correct them and apologize for them there is learning in that too this book felt very relatable to me because i believe in lifelong learning and a lesson in every interaction every situation every circumstance good or bad life teaches us more than anything or anyone thank you thank you everybody for your great titles and that is all of our books for today you can check out our past picture book party videos on our ALD Live YouTube channel. You could sign up for story times or other programs, both in person and virtual, on our events tab at arapahoelibraries.org. And you can also find more book lists, links to story time videos, activity ideas, and lots of other resources at our zero to five page under Browse the Library on our website. We are all done for today and thanks for watching. Our next picture book party will be in December and we'll be sharing our favorite titles from 2022. We hope to see you there.